in making landfall yet again, this time on the South Carolina coast with max winds of 85 miles per hour. Ian's second landfall comes after it leaves at least 21 people dead and millions without power in Florida. Gloria Pesmino has the latest on the storm's destruction. And the Fort Myers fire chief here has told us he is confident all rescues have been completed. More than 200 people rescued here over the last several hours. The devastation here is hard to describe. And I, I, I just want to show you uh, these boats back here. It is just a pile of boats beyond them. The marina that where they were originally uh Low, uh, docked and the river beyond there just pushing everything up against us here you can see just how massive these big boats are and the force that that hurricane must have been carrying in order to move them all across here Ian has moved on from southwest Florida but the aftermath is overwhelming those lots right there those were homes those were hotels those were real property and response in hard hit areas like Fort Myers still in overdrive. Right now our focus is we've got to get the electricity on, especially for our water plants and our wells. Two days after the storm slammed the coast as a powerful category four storm, millions of Floridians remain in the dark and residents are still in shock. Their homes and businesses destroyed. It's surreal. I mean, I you know, events like these you don't think can happen to you. For Southwest counties like Lee, Collier, and Charlotte, the scope of the devastation is yet to be determined. This is a very long process now because they're, they're basically going street to street, home by home. And off the coast, aerial views show Sanibel Island's short front cottages wiped away, their roofs turn off. Meanwhile, in northern and central parts of Florida, flooding is a big concern. With impacts statewide, Ian is likely the largest natural disaster in Florida's history. We know that there's a lot of difficult days ahead. And as Ian moved north, the Carolinas, coastal areas like Myrtle Beach and Charleston did their best to prepare for the unpredictable. And the city of Fort Myers has just managed to restore power to just 15 percent of people uh, here. That means that most of the city remains without power. And it's not clear to us just how soon the electricity will come back. Water is also out in most of Fort Myers. So here it is still very much just about getting the basic necessities. Live in Fort Myers, Gloria Pasmino.